throughout the late spring and early summer, we've had a lot of trail camera pictures of deer with more ticks than normal for that time of year. Each summer, we do a few tests here to kind of monitor the tick populations at the Proving Grounds. During past years, we've walked through bedding areas or areas with low thick vegetation with white pants or a white painter suit on just to illustrate how many ticks are living in that habitat. We've always seen and collected several ticks, but we were curious how many we'd find this year. I'm right on the edge of one of our new food plots we started creating this spring. Before that, it was an old pasture that had been let go many, many years ago. This area was covered with saplings about two or three inches at the base and 10 to 12 feet tall. Been setting like that forever. So we simply come in with a big mower on the front of a skid steer, mowed her down, clean it up, let the weeds come up because we knew there'd be a big weed population. We're getting ready to terminate those weeds and plant a crop. Because this area went from closed canopy saplings, really low quality habitat, to new growth, I'm sure a lot of deer have been using this area because it's surrounded by mature forest. When a lot of deer use an area in the Ozarks, you can bet there's gonna be a lot of ticks. Probably a good place to demonstrate just how many ticks there are in the Ozarks. So, I got a little volunteer today for our annual tick density check. Luke will be a senior at Virginia Tech in wildlife and has a strong interest in research related to deer. So Luke, we got you in the white painter suit and I want you just to mosey through here like a deer browsing might be. Just think about where deer would walk and kind of mosey through there. And we're gonna send you with some tape and as a tick or two gets on you, just take that tape and pat it and it, the back of it will stick to the tape so we can kind of count them and I'll keep track, I'll do the hard work. I'll stand here in the shade and kind of keep track of how many minutes you wander around and then we'll do a little count. Let's say you're gonna wander for 15 minutes. It's easy for a deer to browse through here for 15 minutes, that's no big deal. So we'll have Luke kind of just wander through for 15 minutes and here be collecting ticks along the way. Let's see what we come up with. All right, Luke, I'm gonna use the ever handy smartphone. I'm gonna put on stopwatch. And ready, you about ready to take off walking? Let's do it. Here we go, we're rolling. And you kind of, yeah, just kind of yell out and tell us, you know, yeah, you don't have to get too excited here. Just be a deer, bro. Oh, I see a bunch of ticks on your back, buddy. But that's okay, they're working around the front. They're getting them. Let's see what you got here. I don't know if I want to get out here or not. This isn't part of the professor's job here, is it? Woo! You might want to give me a little tape there, buddy. Give me another piece of tape. Ah, uh, one, two. They're browsing, they're stopping in one place a little bit. They're taking a bite or two. And when you see Luke's hand moving, you know he's grabbing a tick. I could get some off me, but that might mess up the results here, and I haven't went too far. There are not many advantages of being old, but one is you don't have to be the apprentice anymore, folks. Three. Ooh, look at that. I got one, two, three, four. We are three minutes and 50 seconds into this, and I've been maybe 10 yards at the most. And I got a few of these off loop, but I got 20 or so ticks on here on me standing right here let alone a deer foraging all through here. And you can tell Luke, he can't really walk around for getting all the ticks off of him. So I think y'all are gonna be amazed at the actual count at the end of 15 minutes. We're at 15 minutes. Luke, bring it in, buddy. And we're give you a little checking over once you get in here. So we're at 15. And I got a wad on me just in. Oh my goodness, yeah. Go ahead and clean those off for safety. I see some crawling up low there too. On your other leg. I see several on your other leg. For safety reasons, we're go ahead. We're not trying to fudge here, but. Guys, there's gonna be five or six right there. Yeah, there's a little one right about an inch above your boot here on the front. There you go. 
All right, Luke, let's look at your tape. And I can see it from here. <laughs> we're probably not gonna count that. Folks, we're gonna get up, get show you close up. We're not gonna count that till we get back in the lab, can sort it out, but it is covered with ticks. Oh my goodness. Imagine a fawn laying still and trying to hide in that type of vegetation for a couple of weeks, let alone 15 minutes. Ticks can have a huge impact on the health of a deer herd. They can spread disease, and like we showed you on the fawn, probably kill a few deer each year. Research out of Texas has shown that if you remove most of ticks and parasites off a deer that's pretty heavily infected, probably get about a 15% increase in antler size. That may not sound like much, but that takes a 100 inch deer to 115 inch deer, or a 150 to a 170 plus. Before you get all excited, please know it's illegal anywhere to medicate wild free ranging deer. Let's say you medicate a deer with a dewormer or something like that, and it gets across your property line and is harvested by someone else and they feed that meat to their family. The deer may have consumed that medicine and not had enough time for it to pass through its system. We took the ticks Luke and I collected back to the office and started counting. My piece of tape had 46 ticks, 46, and I didn't move 10 yards in short vegetation. Luke's piece of tape had 158 ticks, and he didn't get them all. While he'd be patting here, he may brush some off as he's walking through the brush. There are 96 15 minute blocks in 24 hours. If you multiply that out by two weeks or about the amount of time, Newborn fawns tend to lay and hide more than they're up and moving around. They're just a tick magnet laying there. Well, it's easy to see a fawn could have more than 200,000 ticks on it, even in this habitat. When dry ice evaporates, it puts off carbon dioxide gas, the same stuff we exhale. That gas is what attracts ticks. That gas lets them know there's a host or a blood meal close by. Luke first went to about a 26 acre area that we've burned several times in the past 15 years, including this spring. The area is composed of native grasses and forbs, a really good feeding and bedding area. Luke put a piece of white material on the ground, put a plastic container down, and put the dry ice in the container. Within 12 minutes, the first tick appeared. After that, I think that scout used his cell phone because lots of ticks started coming in to what they thought was a blood meal. Luke also set up another tick trap in a wooded area with a thick leaf mat. After three hours, Luke picked up the traps, cameras, and ticks, brought it back to the office so we could see what happened. Ticks don't drink, they absorb moisture, so they tend to hang in areas that are retaining more moisture. A closed canopy forest with thick leaf litter tends to retain more moisture or have a higher humidity level than out in the open where the sun is shining. When the count was over, there were a whopping 243 ticks collected in the timber site and only 63 in the bedding area. Imagine being a deer wanting to bed on a cool north slope during the day under a closed canopy forest. Within minutes, there would be ticks on and more coming to that deer. Ticks are a parasite and they need a blood meal to survive. As they're extracting blood from their host, they can pass diseases that they carry to that host. There are many tick-borne diseases. I have personally had Rocky Mountain and Auriculiosis. There's also Lyme disease, Starry, and other nasty things that really have a negative impact on humans. We're not sharing this to scare you, but to educate you. And before you go outside this summer, make sure if you're going anywhere where there's a bunch of leaves or tall vegetation, to be prepared for ticks. We work outside every day. How do we survive this many ticks? Pretty simple. We treat our clothes with a product that has permethrin in it. 
Permethrin is a great tick repellent, but it's not sprayed on like off or something like that. You want to treat your clothes and let it dry on there. It will bond to the fabric and then repel the ticks. Permethrin is great because it will stay in your clothing for several washes. You don't have to do it every day. Even with these precautions, we all check for ticks every day when we shower up that evening. Don't be afraid to go outside this summer. Just use the same precautions we do and check for ticks when you come in.